This is our episode 12 of Fluid Mechanics Tutorial. In this tutorial, we will do a review of mass conservation that you have learned in thermodynamics. Also, we are talking about free jet as an application of a lonely equation. That is conceptually easy, but the same problem near the end of the video would involve much math, and that appeared in the last year's final. So I encourage those who are not so good at calculus, carefully study about that part, so you are familiar with the concept of mass conservation after taking thermodynamics. For a tank with one inlet and one outlet, to have the mass inside to remain constant, we must have the mass flow rate as the inlet equals mass flow rate as the outlet. But we also have mass flow rate equals rho AV. So we have this familiar equation. For incompressible case, the densities are equal. So we have this equation. Or the ingoing volume flow rate equals the outgoing volume flow rate. But in general, for a tank with multiple inlet and multiple outlet, the spread of mass increase equals mass flow rate in minus mass flow rate out. So we have this general form of mass conservation. In chapters 5 and 6, you will see some other fancy ways of writing this out. And people refer to this kind of equation as continuity equation. Then we look at the example of free jet. Looking at ponds 1 and 2, since both ponds are exposed to the atmosphere, we have both pressures goes to zero. Also, with reference to a figure, we set Z2 as a reference. So this goes out, and we set this length as H. So this is H. Finally, observe that the tank is large. We have V1 equals A2 V2 divided by A1. And this ratio is really, really small. So that we take this one approximately equals 0. So this also goes out. And if we solve for V2, we get V2 equals square root 2GH. Now we look at our first example. All of the three choices have the velocity increase as the depth increase. This makes sense and we cannot say which is wrong from this observation. So the three choices are certainly different. The first one has the increasing rate decrease as the depth increase. So we write down d square v dh square smaller than zero. And for the middle one we have now we can use this observation to judge which is right. For the free jet formula, we have just derived V equals square root 2 GH. So dV dH is square root 2 divided by 2 G divided by square root H. And we do one more derivative. By power law. And this guy is always positive. So this guy is always negative. And we have this as wrong answer and we, and we only have this as the right answer. We now move on to another example. We first label points 1 and 2 as shown. We check that if we can use by only equation. First, the fluid is water and of course this is a steady and in viscous form. Also, this point will go from here to here. So this is also a long streamline. So we can apply by only equation. So let's just write down P1 divided by rho. But we observe that ponds 1 and 2 are both exposed to the atmosphere. So these two guys goes out. And pond 2 is the highest pond here. So it cannot have any velocity. And this also goes to 0. So we have V1 equals square root 2 G Z2 minus Z1. And we plug in the values. The difference in elevation is 70 mm. And that gives but the question asks for flow rate, so we go on and calculate flow rate equals AV1, and that is pi d squared divided by 4 V1, and we plug in the values. And we are done with this example. So you have heard Professor Lee going through this example, so I am not repeating. Anyway, this problem is really standard and his approach is really illustrative. So I encourage you to try it once yourself. So I'm doing a slightly different example here, and I will be using a slightly different approach. Now, the tank has two fluids. So the relation V equals square root 2 GH does not work anymore, and we have to re-derive the relationship. We also note that the 0 0.7 meter here is changing, so we label this varying water level as H. 
Now we start our analysis by taking pawns one, two, three. And one will go to two, two will go to three. Here we refer row as row motor. By looking at pawns one and two, we can apply the Bologna equation. We also look that all the conditions for Bologna equation has been satisfied. So for pawns one and two, we can write down p one. But again, pawns one is exposed to atmosphere, so this goes zero, and the two pawns are in the large reservoir. So these two guys go zero. So what we are left with is P2 equals and that is the hydrostatic pressure. And we plug in the values. Water has 9.8k specific weight and pawns 1 and 2 has elevation difference of 1.9 meter. And that is and for pawns 2 and 3 we can also write down Again, pawn 2 is in a large reservoir, so it has nearly zero velocity. And pawn 3 is exposed to atmosphere, so it also goes zero. So we are left with, and we plug in the values. And the elevation difference between pawn 2 and 3 is defined as h, so gh. And that becomes, so we have 3, 3 equals. And this is our desired relationship. Now, since the fluid is incompressible, by mass conservation, we can write down, and there is the volume flow rate going in minus volume flow rate going out. And there is nothing going in, but Q out equals area of the hole times the velocity of pound three. So, and we plug in the values. And we get this ugly thing. So we let this constant as A and this constant as B. But what about this guy? We just know about the volume of tank equals the volume of oil plus volume of water. But this guy is constant. So we don't need to care about it. And volume of water equals area of the tank times the water level. And that is 2.6 times 9.5 times H. This is 24.7 h. So we conclude that the volume, the h is the volume, and that is 24.7. And we look at this equation again. We write by chain rule, and the right hand side is negative q out, and that is a square root b plus g h. This formula says that these two guys equal. So these two guys equal. And we are left with this differential equation. But again, this is a separable differential equation. Since we can throw things around and this becomes... Where this guy is purely function of H. And this guy is purely function of T. And we integrate both sides from t equals 0 to the required time tf and as t equals 0, h equals 0 0.7 and as the required time, the water level is 0 we divide this task into a few steps we first bring this guy out and find its antiderivative and we let u equals b plus gh so h equals u minus b divided by g dh equals 1 over g du so this guy equals and that is we change it back so from this equation we have so tf equals and that is And we are done with this complicated example. If you have no problem with the lecture and the previous example, you shall try this problem. Now I give you a hint. The hardest part here is to model the volume of water as a function of water depth. The rest of the procedure is somehow similar. Do find us if you cannot solve this problem. So today we talk about mass conservation. 
free jet, and how to solve time problems. We went through three example here. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching. Feel free to ask us any question and give us any feedback in the comments.